Okay, thank you. Are we ready? All right. It's 5.31 by our clock here in the Chigash boardroom this evening. Good evening, everyone. My name is Bettina Chastain, and I'm the chair of the board of directors for Chugach Electric Association, and I'm going to be chairing the meeting tonight. Tonight, our meeting is obviously being held in a virtual platform. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the health and safety restrictions around it, the board voted this year not to have an in-person meeting. All of the guidance around large gatherings continues to recommend that large groups not come together, share food, interact closely, and as all of you um, probably are aware, if you've attended any of our annual meetings in the past, we do all those things that we shouldn't be doing at this time during those annual meetings. Um, we typically draw about 450 people. We have some dinner and we have a considerable amount of close interaction with our members. So in light of the guidance and the current times that we're in, we decided it was probably in a, um, everyone's best interest to hold this meeting this year in this format. Um, this is a, a being live streamed through a platform called Starleaf, which is the video uh, teleconference platform that we use to hold some of our board meetings during these times. Um, our members have been able to sign up for this meeting uh, on the Chigas website for over a month. And we are very pleased to have you here this evening via this platform and over 100 members signed up to participate this way. And hopefully we have over 100 members online and able to watch and hear um, what we have to say this evening. For those of you not able to attend, um, if you miss the meeting or you just want to hear us repeat all the good information that we're going to provide to you, um, this is being recorded and it will be posted on the Chugach website um, so that you can watch it later if you missed it. Um, so I'm going to take some time to do some introductions for some folks that are in the room that will be presenting some information this evening. Um, people that are part of the organization and participating in this special meeting uh, for our annual membership uh, information. Uh, to my right, our CEO, Mr. Lee Thiebert, is here and he's going to be providing information in this session and the session to follow about some of the activities that have, um, we've undertaken over the past year um, and give an update on things that are going on around QGETCH. Um, other board members that are here in the room, we have a full house this evening, a socially distanced full house. Um, we have our vice chair right behind me to the right, Ms. Susan Reeves. We have our treasurer to my right, um, Rachel Morse. We have our board secretary, Mr. Stuart Parks to my left. We have director Harry Crawford right behind me to my left and director um, Jim Henderson right in front of me and Director Harold Collins as well. All right, also in the room, we have Barbara Simpson Craft, who will be acting as our parliamentarian this evening. So this evening, we do not have a quorum and without a quorum, the only business that the board can conduct is to announce the results of our board election that has been ongoing for the last month, month and a half. We had four candidates that ran for two open seats. Those two open seats are actually being vacated by um, two directors, Director um, Susan Rees and Director Harry Crawford, who have served a very um, long time, three consecutive terms on the board and they will be terming out. This will be their last meeting. So, um, we had four candidates running for those two seats, and I'd like to ask our master election judge, Don Bundick, to come forward and announce the results of the election. Good evening, Madam Chair, Board Directors, and guests. My name is Don Bundick, and it has been my privilege to serve as master election judge for this year's election. The election committee is made up of member volunteers appointed by the board and are responsible for ensuring a fair and impartial election process. 
Chugach hired the certified public accounting firm of BDO USA LLP to serve as election contractor and to conduct the mechanics of the election. The board of directors set April 22nd as the record date for this year's election. Election materials were sent by mail and electronically to 69,589 Chugach members of record on May 15th. Members had the choice to vote by mail, secure Dropbox, or via the internet. Total valid mail ballots and electronic ballots received were 8,249, representing a return rate of 12% of the members of record. Mail voting ended Friday, June 12th at noon, and electronic voting ended at 4 p.m. today. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, there was no in-person voting this year. Election materials were posted online and members notified of election milestones through postcard mailings and through email communications. Paper ballot packets were still available for members who requested it. In addition to postcard mailings and email, members were kept informed of the process through regular updates in the outlet, social media, and one Chugach website. I would like to thank the members of the election committee, nominating committee, and bylaws committee for their service to Chugach and the election process over the past several months. Now, the 2020 election results. Here are tonight's election results. 8,057 electronic ballots cast via internet. 1,009, no, excuse me, 192 paper ballots turned in. In all, a total of 8,000 249 ballots were cast by the above means in this year's election, representing 12% of the members of record. The four candidates running this year were Brad Alfier, Sam Kaysan, Mitchell Roth, and Mark Wiggin. The two candidates who received the most ballots, most votes, excuse me, will be elected to four-year terms. I will give the results of each candidate and read their vote totals twice. Brad, Brad Althier received 3,134 votes. Again, 3,134 votes. Sam Kaysen received 3,947 votes. Again, 3,947 votes. Mitchell Roth received 3,023 votes. Again, 3,023 votes. Mark Wiggin received 3,411 votes. Again, 3,411 votes. Therefore, Mark Wiggin and Sam Kaysen have been elected to four-year terms. Madam Chair, this concludes my election report. Thank you very much. Well, congratulations uh, to all the candidates. Uh, and thank you for those results. And thank you to all of our members who volunteer to serve on our committees and help to ensure a member-driven member election process. Again, since this is a virtual annual meeting held via a live stream from the Chugach boardroom, the election results are the only official business that we'll be conducting in this session this evening. We're gonna adjourn this meeting and then we're gonna convene a separate regular board meeting in order to present our members with some additional information about Chugach and activities of the past year, including information about the acquisition of ML MLNP and a treasurer's report from our board treasurer. Um, stay tuned if you are on live stream and you are calling in and watching us or listening to this. We're gonna take just a few minutes after we adjourn. Uh, we'll get set up and we will reconvene in our regular board session. Uh, so I think we will take a five minute break. Uh, we will resume at exactly 545. I'll call us back into session and we will, um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. Move to adjourn. Okay. All right. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Any opposed? And we are now adjourned. It's 5 4. <clears throat>
Okay. Are you ready? All right, great. It's 545 and I am going to call the meeting to order. This is a regular board meeting for the Chugach Electric Association from the Chugach Electric Boardroom. Um, would you care to stand and please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to start with roll call um, for the directors that are uh, in the room, present in the boardroom. We have Director Parks to my left, Director Henderson, Director Hollis, Director Morse, myself, and um, in the room we have two recent past uh, Board members, Director Reeves, Director Crawford, and we will be administering the oath of office to our newly elected board member, Mr. Wiggin, in just a bit. But first of all, uh, we're going to have a safety minute from, from Tyler. That'll work. Okay. Leave That'll the work. Podium. That way everyone can see yeah. in here. Okay. Nice safety minute. Towing safety. I know during the coronavirus pandemic, it's becoming more popular for Alaskans to go visit campgrounds because they're not full of tourists. So maybe it's been a while since you got the old RV out or you're dragging the boat and you want to do that safely. So make sure your vehicle is up to the task of towing whatever it is you're going to tow behind it. Is it capable from an engine and suspension point of view? And has your vehicle been maintained recently since you haven't been going to campgrounds for a while? Maybe you want to make sure that's ready to go. Be aware, remind yourself that additional weight increases your stopping distance. Um, and you'll have to get used to respecting that additional weight in cornering. Um, check your tires on your trailer and those wheel bearings. There's nothing like being on the side of the road with a fried bearing. So do a safety check, a pre-flight, as it were, on your vehicle before you leave town, including the trailer. Um, additionally, another part of your pre-flight would be to adjust those mirrors and make sure you can see behind you. It's very good to look for uh, cars that can, or objects that can be in the left side of the mirror, could be coming in the center of the mirror as they get closer to you, and then also on the right side of the mirror. So you always want the uh, three mirrors to work together. So anything else about trailer towing safety? All right, enjoy the summer, it's beautiful. Thank you, Andrew. Okay. And now we will have uh, uh, Mr. Clarkson administer the oath, the oath of office to our newly elected board members. Um, Mr. Kaysen is not here this evening in the room, and he will be um, administered the oath at the next board meeting, um, hopefully on Wednesday evening, when our next regularly scheduled meeting is, is um, set for. But Mr. Wiggins will be sworn in this evening. If you could join me up here by the podium. Mr. Wiggins, yes. please raise your right hand. Solemnly swear or affirm that you will honestly and faithfully perform your duties as a director of Chugach Electric Association and that you will uphold the articles of incorporation, the bylaws, and association policies to the best of your abilities. Yes, I will. Congratulations. Thank you. Great. So, the next item um, on the agenda is to approve the agenda for the evening. Is there a motion for approval of tonight's agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion on the agenda for the evening? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval of the agenda, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, 
the agenda is approved unanimously. Item four on tonight's agenda is persons to be heard. And I do not um, see any um, people, additional people in the room. We um, did ask anyone that was interested uh, at the meeting to pre-submit questions and we will be answering these questions this evening and we did get a good selection of them so um, you will be able to um, to have those questions that you pre-submitted um, answered in just a bit here. Um, we have no consent agenda for the evening and uh, we will go on to CEO reports and correspondence and our CEO, Mr. Lee Thiebert, is going to give us a report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and thank you to the members for viewing this via the, the live stream and later on for people that will watch this on the Chugach website. Um, this is a little bit different this year than last year. Obviously, we're not in the Denina Center. And uh, unfortunately, I can't give virtual cookies to all the members, but uh, hopefully next year we'll be back um, in our normal, normal routine. Um, like many businesses, Chugach has really been modifying the way it operates over the years. And we've been making sure that the employees are safe and their members are safe and the general public is safe. So we've modified things as you all are aware the, the lobby was closed for about seven weeks. Um, we've recently reopened with some new rules. Um, there's obviously fewer people that are allowed in the building at one time. You have to socially distance, and we made sure that the employees are protected by having the appropriate um, screens and so forth. So if you really want to come into the Chugach, please do, but we also <coughs> caution you that we do have other methods that are available. So you can go on the website or call and we'll do whatever you feel comfortable with doing. Um, from from the other standpoint, we have today about 25% of our employees are working from home. And I'm really excited about the, the productivity that we do get from our employees while working at home. Um, I think at the, the peak of the um, the outbreak, we we're probably close to 50% um, that we're working from home. So what we're doing is we're, we're starting to slowly bring employees back. We're spreading them out to make sure we don't have too many employees in any one area. And so that's, that's what we're doing. Obviously, with the line crews and the people that operate the power plants, they have to come to work, um, but we're making sure they have separate show up shops and that they don't communicate or work together in close proximity. So that's all working very well. I think we're working on several different show up shops. So the crews are spread out and uh, we hope that that remains in place um, throughout the summer. We really appreciate everybody's cooperation. I know this has been a difficult time and we're doing what we can to, to make it safe for everybody. Um, one of the things we're really proud of this year is, you know, safety is really critical in our industry. And we are now going on 18 months with no lost time injuries. So I guess knock on wood, it's really been great to see in this difficult time um, dealing with the COVID plus having a great safety record. So my hat's off to our supervisors and all of the employees for, for being safe. The next thing I want to talk about is the, the MLMP acquisition. And this is something that obviously we've been working on for a while. And I am pleased to announce that the Regulatory Commission of Alaska approved the sale on May 28th, or approved the acquisition. They did approve it with some conditions. And we have spent a lot of time looking at those conditions. We believe that they are in the best interest of the organization. And, and all of the parties have really reviewed that. And I think everybody's in agreement that the conditions that were put on um, will be good for everybody um, throughout this process. Um, I wanna give you a little bit of history of where we started and we go back to April of 2018 and that's where we had the Anchorage municipal vote and the voters approved the sale on a 65% ratio. 
So everybody thought it was a good deal then, and, it be, and it's still a good deal today. We spent roughly the next year working with the municipality of Anchorage on the details of all the transactions. And it took us a while to come to an agreement. Um, we're working with a number of stakeholders, but we really did spend that next year working with all the parties to, to make something that would work for the members, with the stakeholders, and would be good for everybody for the long term. Um, so we filed um, this with the Regulatory Commission for approval in um, April of 2019. And then it took us a while to go through. We had a hearing um, that started in August of 2019, and we spent uh, probably the next two or three months going through that process. And I can, I can tell you there hasn't been a stone that hasn't been not turned over in reviewing this deal. Um, so we were very, very fortunate to have the decision come out this May, uh, May 28th. And we are now looking forward to doing all the finalizing, going out and doing financing and trying to get this done by, we hope sometime in October. We don't have an exact date yet, but we be, believe it's gonna be in October that we'll have a close of the transaction. Um, the savings, um, the one good thing is that the commission really adopted the savings that we looked at um, through, through this entire process. So it was very assuring that the commission actually looked at the same savings that we looked at internally with, with the board of directors. And what you will see is you're gonna be looking at savings that will go on for as long as Chugach is here, and you're gonna see millions of dollars of reduced rates in the meantime. What we can tell you is that we're very confident that the rates of the new organization will be less than they would be if we had two separate organizations. So we're very confident uh, in that analysis. Um, in the com coming months, we will be providing more data. And for the new members, we're going to let you know exactly what's going to take place. So we'll try to make this transaction as seamless as possible. Um, but we'll, we'll make sure that you have the information ahead of time. And we welcome um, the new members. There are a number of other things that we're doing in the, in the organization. And we do have those listed in our annual report. And if you get a chance, go to our website, um, take a look at the annual report, and you can see some of the different programs that we're working on. And I think you'll find that the annual report is very informative. So we, we look forward to seeing you next year and hopefully back down at the Denina Center. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Chair Chastain. Thank you, Lee. Well, having the, opportun the, the opportunity to serve on the Chugach Board of Directors is one of the advantages of being a member-owned cooperative. Directors serve for a four-year term, not to exceed three consecutive four-year terms. Serving on the board is really an honor, and I think I can speak for myself and for others when I say it's a real privilege. Um, one of the traditions that we started a few years ago but here at Chugach um, is showing a video that captures comments from the board about serving on the board, highlighting some of our uh, major projects of the previous year and looking to the future, speaking about uh, what we see as our role as uh, members of the board of directors um, and, and talking about um, you know, what's facing the organization and the things that we make decisions on in the boardroom here. So tonight, uh, we have a, another short video for you with comments from the board members that were serving Chugach in the previous year, so uh, 2019 board members. I think the most important thing that a board member does is to represent the community members, just looking from a a ratepayer's perspective, what the strategy is for now and for decades into the future. What will keep the utility um, operating where it should be to, to be a benefit to the ratepayers. It's imperative that we look out for our members first. Otherwise, without our members, Chugach has no sustainability, not only to our current members, but to their children and their children's children. Not only worry about 
what's happening today or in the very near future. But what where we're going 10, 20, 30, even 50 years down the road. My most important role is make them realize that this is their company. They own it. They've lent a bunch of money to it. They have a financial interest in its success. And those successes come back to them in, in benefits because that's what a cooperative is. To uh, study and consider the issues, that is really the most important. You ask really good questions and you engage with managers. And that's, that's the most important role of the board. The board member's role is fiduciary responsibility. And most importantly, it is for our members. I represent both his and her views of our membership to the organization, and I am the conduit to the strategic direction and operation of the utility. Well, I think the most important function for the board here as a, as a member-owned co-op is to represent the membership. And that starts with really understanding what do our members want, what do they care about, what's important to the members of Chugach, and how does that get delivered? How do we ensure that Chugach runs? so that we're able to be uh, a well-run electric cooperative for our members. This favorable decision really is exciting and good for our community and good for Tugach. It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing for our community. It's the right thing for our members, for Tugach, and for the municipality. We pursued it, and we pursued it very aggressively with some very aggressive people in this organization and in the city and in, in MLP and uh, with that kind of dedication things happen and these this is needs to happen. I think that the melding of the two employees and coming up with one culture for the co-op is, is what is paramount. Once we get the employees working together and, and knowing what's expected of each one, the rest of it will just fall into place I believe. This is a deal we're going to be talking about for a really long time and the changes that we made. And then I think we're going to roll up our sleeves and get back to work because getting the deal approved is only the start. We need to have our public outreach, member outreach, really uh, well honed in. This is really necessary to assure it's a smooth transition, not only on the employee side, but it's also on the member side. We're going to need the support of our employees, most importantly, and of course, our members and the former ratepayers of MLP. And really, we're going to need the support of the community, too, to help get the very best that we can out of this change. There will certainly be two different cultures of the two utilities, and I think bringing them together so that all the workforce is pulling for the same kinds of, of integration, the savings, and um, doing the work that will bring the efficiencies so that we can have an effective um, combination. Renewable energy. There, we have made some progress on that. We need to continue to focus in that area. There's distributive energy, there's the renewable energies. We'll go there because we, that's where the world's going. We've got to find ways of storing energy because we have wind, we have sun, we have hydrogen to help store it. But all this is new technology and there are some growing pains that are gonna be involved, but we've got to do it. We're concerned about loss of load because the climate is warmer and people are uh, reasonably uh, investing in more energy efficient appliances and energy efficient lighting. The exciting counterbalance to that is the interest in electric cars and we're excited about that because that will help counterbalance that loss of load. I think the time has come for the electric vehicle. I think that's a game changer for Anchorage and for the country, for the for the world, and I think that Chugach can do a lot and really help uh, Alaska become a place where electric vehicles are used all the time. I really think that the utility needs to continue to focus on keeping the, the rates down for our ratepayers. Well, one of the real reasons I initially became a board member was because I felt, felt that the rail belt needed better alignment. All the utilities, we have several utilities all interconnected on the rail belt. It's important we get along and work together. This will bring efficiency to all the different utilities and that helps reduce costs. 
I was talking to a teacher one time and they, they said, you know, this is my chance to touch the future. And this nine years at, at um, Chugach is one of the ways that I get to touch the future. The surprising thing about being on the board for me has been what friendships that I've been able to make, both among the managers at Chugach and among my fellow board members. And we have had fun together and we have respected each other and made equal contributions to, to studying and resolving issues and helping uh, represent our members. And it has been a wonderful time and I'm gonna miss all the managers, I'm gonna miss all my fellow board members and miss going to meetings on Wednesdays. <laughs>
but for our new business, we will be answering the pre-submitted questions from those of you online and um, watching us this evening who submitted questions that our CEO, Mr. Siebert, is going to be answering for you. All right. So I'm in the enviable position of asking the questions and giving the answers. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but so we did ask you to, to put in questions. Um, we did receive a number of responses, so thank you very much for that. And many of them were very similar, so we tried to lump them together. So I'm going to read the question and then I'm going to give you the prepared response. And I apologize for reading, but I just want to make sure that we get all the information out to the members. And this, again, will be available on the website so you can review it later on. Okay. Um, the first one is, what is the status of the acquisition of MLMP? And as I stated earlier, the Regulatory Commission of Alaska conditionally approved the acquisition of MLMP by Chugach on May 28, 2020. The parties are reviewing the conditions to make sure they're acceptable to all. Chugach and the MOA, Municipality of Anchorage, currently expect the transaction will close in October. We are still finalizing the specific date. And question number two, will there be job losses as a result of the Chugach acquisition of MLMP? The simple answer is no. Um, Chugach committed to no layoffs as a result of the transaction and all MLMP and Chugach employees will continue to have a job if they want one. The third question is how will the acquisition of MLMP impact my electric rates in the future? In the long term, electric rates will be lower than they otherwise would be if you maintain two separate utilities. There are significantly greater efficiencies in operating a single utility rather than two separate utilities, which ultimately results in lower rates for the residents and businesses of Anchorage. Chugach estimates savings well in excess of $200 million over 15 years that will be passed on to members in the form of lower electric rates. We have said all along and maintain today, ratepayers will have lower long-term rates as a result of this acquisition. The fourth question, will the IBW labor contracts for MLMP and Chugach be in alignment so there are no wage disparities between the bargaining groups performing similar tasks? I can tell you this was a, a, a great deal of discussion. Um, I was personally at the table when we went through this and it was very difficult because there were very differences between the two organizations. But we can assure you that they are as close as they can be, but they will take about a five year period to implement. So the contract ends in 2025 and we believe by 2025, all of the ramp ins will be um, very similar. And we are looking at very similar things on the management side. The fifth question, what steps have been taken to harden the system against cyber attacks? Cyber security is very important to Chugach and our members. We have a robust cybersecurity program that incorporates industry best practices, ongoing training, and upgraded equipment. Okay, the number six question. Your rates seem high. Why do I pay so much in a small condo? I will answer your question in two parts. First, Chugach's rates are very competitive and our retail rates remain among the lowest in the rail belt. Also, the acquisition of MLMP will allow us to reduce rates, which will translate into lower electric rates. The second is more specific to condominium situation or really anybody out there. Um, electric appliances that produce heat are potentially high sources of energy use. Examples include electric heaters, and I, I know a lot of people, you'll forget you have an electric heater turned on, um, but that gets us quite a bit. Electric clothes dryers, old refrigerators, old dishwashers, electric water heaters, and incandescent lighting. Those are all things that can cost you. But I can tell you that the, the membership has really done a great job over the years in fixing all of these. And they've seen, a actually there's been about a 20% improvement in the last 10 years just in energy efficiency. 
Also consider items that operate all the time, cable boxes, gaming consoles. I know everybody has one of those in their house. Um, even a small amount of energy use on a continual basis can result in increases in your electric bill. This can be remedied by just switching off the power strip when you're not using it. You can always call our member services team for assistance. We loan out what we call a watt meter. You can test the electric usage of any plug-in device. Additionally, you can monitor your energy use online in 15 minute increments using Chugach's My Account portal. My Account lets you see patterns to see your energy use, which could help you find the reason for your high bills. So please call the customer service reps and they can walk you through. And I've heard of a, a number of people that it really does make a difference and you can pinpoint where your high energy use is coming from. The next question, with Cook Inlet natural gas prices steadily rising, what steps is Chugach taking to prevent rate increases in the future? We continually look to ways to maximize efficiencies and to keep rates low. Recent examples include our acquisition of the working interest in the Beluga River unit, gas field in 2016, and the acquisition of MLMP that also has a large part of the field. By combining the two utilities serving the Anchorage Bowl into one, we increase efficiency and reduce duplication. We also adopted new technologies to increase efficiencies and reduce cost. Over the past several years, Chugach has fully transitioned to an advanced metering infrastructure system, which creates significant savings in our ability to identify and restore power during outages and provide members with significantly more detailed information on their electric usage. Looking to the future, we will continue to capitalize on the opportunities to reduce cost, including continued adoption of new technologies, partnering, partnering with other rail belt utilities and other opportunities. When are my electric, lakes, electric <coughs> lines going to be buried? And if you please go on the website, we do have um, an undergrounding, it's a five-year program and you can actually see exactly what areas we'll be doing next. Um, Chugach's undergrounding program follows the requirements of the Municipality of Anchorage laws on land use, also known as Title 21. The priorities of these projects are based on the essential system improvements needed on the distribution system and then by targeted areas outlined in Title 21. A five-year plan is created and updated annually listing the upcoming projects. Okay, why is Chugach not burying their lines in older subdivisions like Spinard? I've been a member for 33 years, thank you, and we are charged monthly, but I don't see any work even proposed in our area. The majority of projects in the undergrounding program up to this point in time have been associated with larger system improvement projects. These projects retired overhead lines that were inadequate to serve existing loads or accommodate load growth. As these critical system improvements projects are being completed, the project priorities can start to shift into neighborhoods with older overhead facilities. The existing plan lists Turnigan Park subdivision as a multi-year project starting in the design phase later this year with construction in 2021 to 2023. Roosevelt Park is a neighborhood in Spinard <laughs> that is scheduled to start the design process next year with multi-phase construction in 2022 and 2023. The projects in these older neighborhoods have significant obstructions like sheds, fences, access issues, and older service entrance equipment that might not be able to be accommodate the underground services. This causes these projects to be more expensive and to take considerable longer to undertake. We will continue to work these neighborhoods projects into our plans as the budget and resources allow. Okay, the next one is what renewable resources specifically do you intend to utilize? How will they be implemented, managed by Chugach, and is it sustainable long term? Chugach continually strives to increase the amount of renewable generation resources on its system, including hydro, wind, and solar. With a sustainable business philosophy that was adopted by our board of directors, we evaluate 
our decisions on the basis of financial, environment, and community impacts. One example is the Bradley Lake hydroelectric facility is expected to start producing about 10% more energy next year, or actually probably later this year, based on the Upper Battle Creek diversion project that complete, will be completed this summer, I'm sorry. This will add roughly 11,000 megawatt hours of additional energy, which equates to power for 1,600 homes. Those are the questions that were submitted. We probably have a few more that came in today. We'll make sure we get those added into um, the dialogue and the response, which will be posted on the website. Thank you for submitting those questions. And Madam Chair, I'll turn it back to you. Okay. Well, that's the end of our program for the evening. Um, as Lee said, these the answers to the questions that were submitted um, and the ones that have just come in will be posted on the website. Uh, you can rewatch this if you if you'd like. It, it it has also been recorded this evening, and it will be available on the website as well for those who didn't get to attend. You can tell all your friends to take a watch. Um, so at the end of the meeting here, we will go to director comments. So I'll start with Mr. Parks. Thank you. Um, I'll try to keep it short. I guess the first thing I want to say is really, I want to thank uh, Director Reeves and Director Crawford uh, for their service on the board for the last uh, approximate last decade. And really the opportunity to serve with them has been a pleasure. So I appreciate it. Um, as for the current election and all, I want to thank all the candidates. I, I'm really hopeful, you know, it's nice to see the interest to serve on the board. And I do want to thank uh, Mark Wigan and Tom Kaysen in congratulating them. And uh, anyways, that is basically what I wanted to say. And most importantly, thank the members who joined us tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Dr. Henderson? Yeah, I, I want to almost identical to Stuart's comments. It's that's really what it's all about. It's it's really it's about for the people out there. It's really about participation. And Harry and Susan gave a remarkable young effort here. I can't. I've had, I've enjoyed the conversations and the challenges and the and all the effort we've been here. And I want to thank you and Sam both for offering to participate because it's a, it's crucial to run this electric utility is a very strong business on behalf of everybody. Um, and I would ask that more people participate in volunteering for our <laughs> committees and our, our membership uh, advisory board and participate in the election next year again and run. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Henderson. Dr. Hollis? Well, thank you. And uh, at the risk of being redundant, I also would like to thank Director Reeves and Director Crawford for their service. They've been a tremendous addition to the board. Uh, we will miss both of you very much. Uh, congratulations to Mr. Wigan, Mr. Kaysen for our new members. We look forward to having them on board. In them getting up to speed and, and being uh, and helping us with with providing guidance uh, for the combined utilities that we have going forward here. And, and lastly, I'd like to to thank both our CEO uh, Lee and his management team. This has been a tremendous effort on the acquisition over the last couple of years here, and it's. We've a lot of work yet to be done. And so th these folks have worked very hard. Our members, all of you as members, we appreciate you being our members, being supportive of Chugach, paying your bills, that always helps. <laughs> and, uh, and being involved, as Director Henderson said, it is important to be involved in your co-op. And we appreciate your input, we appreciate uh, all the comments that you provide to help us uh, make this organization better and 
going forward, make the combined organization uh, with the acquisition a success. We're very excited about that. Thank you. Thank you, Director Hollis. Director Morse. Sure. I want to thank all the members who've attended the meeting, who are listening in, who are going to watch it recorded. Um, your participation and your membership owned uh, co-op really matters. I want to congratulate our new board members. Um, mm -hmm. Welcome to the team and the work ahead. Um, it's going to be good. I want to thank all the candidates um, who participated. You know, it really is good to have a full field of candidates because you really push the election. You push the membership to get out and vote. You push each candidate to be stronger. And you really make sure in your broad range of issues that all of the important issues for Chugach are discussed. We um, had a great run with our election in part because we had four really strong candidates, which is evident by how close the vote was. Um, so I hope that all of you feel really good about what you have done um, for our cooperative in just running. We all know what it's like um, to put yourself out there. So thank you um, for that. I will also not miss the opportunity to once again thank uh, Director Crawford and Director Reeves and tell you how much I'm going to miss you um, as you transition off. Thank you for the full term of service that you have given. Um, I want to thank all the employees of Chugach. This is a wonderful company to be on the board of directors for, and a huge part of that is the effort of the Chugach employees. And I want to say um, to all the MLNP employees who might be out there also listening because you're curious about us, um, I am looking forward to welcoming you as we all are onto the team and getting started in this brand new day um, for Chugach Electric. Thank you, Director Morse. Director Wiggins. Thank you. I would uh, all I would like to say is I, I uh, appreciate uh, everybody's vote, uh, uh, members. I look forward to working with the Chugach board. I want to express my appreciation, and echoing what you said. There were four very fine candidates, which I must say I've run for this board many years ago, and that was not the case. So my compliments, Brad and Mitch, and so uh, that's great. And uh, I appreciate the fact that people got engaged and participated. I look forward to it. Thank you. I always let Lee go before I um, have the unenviable position of not having anything left to say that's not redundant. But go ahead, Lee. Well, I, I certainly don't want to repeat everything. I, I, again, um, Susan and Harry, you've been um, you know just great to work with over the years. I'm going to miss you on a very personal level. Um, you, you've really made this organization what it is today, and I want to congratulate uh, Mr. Wigan and Mr. Kaysen um, for the election. We look forward to working with you guys in the future, and I want to thank the, the membership. We had a 25% increase in people voting this year, so we'll continue to look at ways to, to, get, to garner more votes, but thank you very much. I also want to say um, thank you to the board and the Anchorage Assembly and the mayor and, and his administration for all the work they did in pulling this uh, acquisition together. Um, it's been a great team and really all the employees, and as Rachel said, it's not only the employees of Chugach, but also MLMP and the municipality that all made this work as a team. And so I look forward to um, having, you know, 37,000 more people voting next year <laughs> and uh, or whatever the number is, I'm probably somewhere out there. But anyway, thank you very much and look forward to another year. Thank you, Lee. Um, so always in the last position, I um, can't say enough thanks to all the people that have already been thanked. Um, I would like to give extra appreciation to Director Reeves and Director Crawford because they deserve it. Um, to spend a decade committed to your um, cooperative and lots and lots of Wednesday night meetings and many other nights in between, um, especially these last two and a half, three years while we have been um, really focused on the acquisition of MLNP, um, they've gave, given a very significant amount of time, and we certainly would not be in this.
position um, today if it wasn't for your service and um, your tenure um, to get us here because we've been talking about it certainly during the decade, the entire decade that you've been on the board. So thank you. Um, I want to thank the membership um, for allowing us to be directors. Um, I'd like to take, thank my fellow directors for the past year. We've all worked very, very hard. I appreciate working with all of you. Um, I appreciate um, your confidence in me and allowing me to be the chair over the past year. Um, it's, it's a fun but challenging position and I, I appreciate every one of you. And of course, I appreciate Lee, its management staff and the entire organization. Um, and I want to congratulate um, the new board members. I look forward to working with you and the skill sets that you'll bring um, to the board. Um, as a seven member board, there's lots and lots of work to do and everybody has their own unique set of skills. And I look forward to you, you, Mr. Wigan and Mr. Kaysen lending their skill set to the issues that we have at hand um, with the, the acquisition and the integration process coming up so we can really achieve all the savings for our members. And I want to thank all of the candidates. Um, it really is heartening to see that we had four incredibly talented um, candidates that were willing to run for the board seats that, that are open. Um, as Director Moore said, it's, um, it's telltale how qualified and how great these candidates are with the, um, the vote count being so very close. Thank you to the members who voted. Um, please continue to vote get out there and vote and um, please become involved and uh, you know every year we have an election and there's board seats that come open and if you want to get involved in your organization please do so and for those of you who um, the candidates that uh, did not get on this time come back um, become involved in the organization through committees and we we really need your help and would love to see you run again. So with that, I would take a motion for adjournment for this evening. Move to adjourn. Here we Second. Okay. All those in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, we are now adjourned at 6.32. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.